So today I'm just doing some maintenance on our bus. I'm checking all of our airlines for leaks. I'm just gonna use my air compressor and set the regulator to 120 PSI. Uh, and then just go through the front service port and let everything fill up like it would if it was operating. Uh, next, I'm just, I'm just using simple like dish detergent with water, nothing special. I'm just spraying every fitting I can find and just looking for excessive air leaks. That one looks pretty good. Next, one back here in the engine area. Now I've known about this valve leaking for quite a while now. I just haven't been in a good place to get to it. So now I'm gonna get it taken care of. And my plan is to just delete this valve. I already have a service port underneath my batteries that'll work for just about anything I need to use it for. So this is my shutdown valve. And yes, my engine is shut down, so it shouldn't really matter that it's leaking air. However, I just want to fix it to help eliminate some of the air leaks. So far, I've got two that need some work, and I, I suspected that those were leaking already. Um, I know my windshield wiper motors are leaking. And my plan is to just disconnect them and put in some electric motors. So for now, I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna crawl under the bus in the front end and check all around the air tank for the front end and find out which lines actually control the pneumatic motors for my wipers and uh, just just cap those off once I figure out which ones they are. So rather than just going at it aimlessly under my bus and pulling lines apart and putting them back together until I found the correct ones, uh, I used the manual that came with my bus. It identifies all of the equipment and the airlines by number uh, and then categorizes them by number also. So it made it it was just a huge time saver made it a lot easier and you can still buy these manuals there is a supplier for them so if you don't have one and you need one uh, go through some of the Eagle Bus groups on Facebook and probably find them uh, but I did find the correct line disconnected them and put caps on them and then I moved on to the step actuator for our front step uh, underneath our front door uh, I did end up deleting this piece of equipment uh, because we don't have the step anymore. Uh, it was just kind of banged up from bottoming out so many times, but I cut the lines and then just capped them at the air tank and left the lines up to the aero valves in place. Wasn't worried about them working anymore because there was no longer gonna be air supplied to them. And before I did any of this work, I actually depressurized the tanks using the valve right at the bottom of the tank. And I'll show you that right here. Now this, this is actually my air panel. This is where all your control valves are. Now I have this tank in here. This is an auxiliary tank. Just checking all these. So far, we're looking good. We'll get down here and see if I can't get to these. I don't want to wish anything on myself, but I swear once upon a time, these were leaking. That one is leaking right there. So working around to the front of the bus, that valve actually has a lot of corrosion on it, so I kind of expected it to leak. I'm just gonna replace it, and then check in other various components under the front end. This is also where I have my auxiliary air compressor, and where I've also spliced in using different check valves and fittings. So I'm gonna be checking those while I'm underneath here, and then also replacing this compressor. So the airlines to the compressor are looking pretty good, so I just need to swap it. Next, I'm back under the front end, and again, I'm just checking every single fitting and valve I can find for leaks. So something else that's a good idea while you're underneath here is just check your steering components. You can see here I found a tie rod that looks like it could be on its way out. So it's probably another part I need to order. Okay, so I'm under the rear end now of our bus and I'm just gonna get comfortable. So I got kind of lucky on the bogey wheel there. I actually thought the brake chamber was out and come to find out it was just the brake line. So it might just be a better idea to go have a new brake line made. You'll see here that the air pressure just blows the mist away when I check it. So I put my hand on it and 
There's for sure a leak right there at that swivel joint. Try to attack this brake line issue I got. So I'm going to disconnect it here, I believe, is the best place to go at it from. And then, and then I'll come down on it right there and take it apart there. So I hear that the bogies, it's pretty common for these to go out because this is a moving part and it's connected right there at that joint. And I'm going to get this line made and I'll probably have it made about an extra three inches long to take that bind out of there. All right, so I got the brake line off and this is the end that goes to the top. So this mounts up in there like that. And this is the line that goes down to the bottom. And I knew that there was a twist union, uh, but it was so seized on there that uh, I just got tired of messing with it and I just cut the line because uh, I'm gonna have a new one made anyways. And like I said, I'm gonna make it a little bit longer so that we don't have a leak you know, we don't have that bind and constant shift on this joint because that's where it was leaking was right there. So that tells me that that joint wore out from this line going up and down all the time with the, uh, with the uh, swing arm, with the bogey wheel. So I did have to remove my shock from there and that's okay because I bought new shocks anyways and I got the shocks coming in. This was just bending. So you want to put a wrench on this right here and hold this in place. And I do have some debris in there. I'll have to clean that out. All right, so I got me a new fitting. I had to make it about three inches longer than the old one. So that's about what I wanted. So to seal the lines, I'm just using pipe sealer. Uh, for me, I feel like it, that, that's good enough and it works as a good lubricator whenever you're actually going to um, start threading your lines together. So there might be some mixed opinions about this, uh, but Really, you know, if this was an LP line, then yes, I would use tape and then also uh, some glue to help lubricate the line and for extra sealant. And before it was leaking. Yay, it's not leaking anymore. Awesome. I'm here looking at the bogey wheel stuff. Uh, I thought I'd go ahead and, and make note of where my brake shoes were and also the wear pattern on the drum. Now the previous owners told me that they had replaced the brakes, but I'm not sure if the mechanics actually just decided not to do the bogies or if the owners decided not to do the bogies and just didn't tell me that. Now the bogies are great for my bus because it's added braking support, but when I compare those shoes to the rest of the shoes on the rear drums and the front drums, there's a noticeable difference, so this is probably something else I'm going to have to add to the list of things uh, to replace in the near future. So still under the rear of the bus, I'm just soaking all the air lines and just looking for leaks. Uh, I do have Jennifer helping me out as well. She's pressing on the brake pedal and that's just allowing me to check the brake lines while I'm underneath here and the brake chambers as well for any leaks. So now that I've figured out where a majority of these lines go, I've actually decided to delete this valve. Uh, and one of the reasons why I came to that conclusion is because it just takes on a lot of heat. And while I was just checking it, it snapped in my hands. So I'm gonna replace that and also, or not replace it, but completely remove it right here at this fitting. Uh, next, these are my Skinner valves. Uh, I'm checking those because those are what actually control my shutoff valve, my high idle valve, and also the jake brake valve. All of this valve system actually gets its air from the valve over there underneath my batteries. Uh, so, kind of sucks. I wanted to remove that entire valve down there, but I have to leave everything else because all of these other lines that are in here, they actually go to my um, Skinner valves down here for my Jake, my high idle, um, and my, my shutdown valve. So this controls all of that. And so I've got a little bit of research to do before I just go jacking with this. I'd like to find out what this goes to. May have had something to do with the fact that it had a manual transmission in it before. Um, 
but everything works. So I really don't want to go messing with it too much, but I don't know why this would just have, you know, nothing there connected to it. So a little bit of research to do. I decided to replace a couple airlines too. And while I was doing this, I just took some of the fittings apart and was going to replace them. So I was putting a parts list together uh, for repairing some of these lines. I'm going to go ahead and use the T union I had for this uh, and just put a cap on it. So uh, I've eliminated all those other lines I didn't need. All these lines are still intact and they're good all down through here. So I got my new line on here. As I said, I'm just gonna put a cap on this one. We couldn't find a coupler. Uh, then we got that line back on. Still don't have any, still don't have anything to do with this. Uh, and then this was a new line that we put on and it ran over to this union here, or this coupler here, uh, to just, to eliminate the line that went over to the valve that we had over here. So, but my main fix to, for today was the brake line and I also got my compressor in, and I like compressor. Um, so my front door, my bow door is actually, I have an auxiliary air compressor that fills up a tank. And so off of that, I have a remote entry that actuates the, the air valve for the bow door. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, got this one exchanged. I'm gonna get this put on too is what airs up my auxiliary air tank for my bow door. It's a max 200 PSI, 100% continuous duty uh, air compressor, 12 volt. And the, really the only thing I have to do is just uh, dismount it, put the new one in. And before I do that, I just have to put the new air line, basically my swivel line and the check valve from the old unit onto the new unit. Uh, it's a pretty easy swap out. Up. just need to do some cable management there with some zip ties that I got my check valve back in there oh what all right that guy is just vomiting so fortunately I was able to just take this valve apart uh, that little cup seal you see at the bottom there I don't even know where to begin to source those let alone the shutoff valve itself uh, but the top of this actually just seats together there's not a seal so the only gasket in there is that cup-shaped gasket. Once I cleaned all the debris off, I just sprayed some lubricant on it, put it back together, and it was sealed up tight. So the local truck part supply was able to cross-reference this number and get me a new pressure switch. So I got that put in and sealed up all those leaks. I did have to use a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter fitting just to get the uh, air pressure switch to fit to the original uh, fitting on the bus. So on the front, I did decide to move that uh, service port to the side instead of sticking straight out the front. I did not like that it punched through the back of the Eagle emblem. Uh, it just allowed a lot of moisture to come in along with whatever kind of air was outside while driving. So I hope you like this video. If you haven't done it yet, like and subscribe. It's really easy to do.